For the 15th year, Investors is shining a light on the progress in Boston schools. We're glad you're here to celebrate with us. Each year, three schools are chosen to showcase the exciting work happening in classrooms across the city. The School on the Move Prize reminds us that with strong support, hard work, and deep relationships, incredible change is possible. That change benefits young people like me. My name's Kenise. I'm a recent graduate from Boston Day and Evening Academy. This summer, I participated in the Bloomberg Arts Internship Program. I'm so thankful that I had this amazing opportunity due to investors. Today is an important day for young people. When any of the schools in our city succeed, all of our schools can learn from that. And that's good news for all students. This year is a little different for all of us. Teachers, school leaders, families, and community members across Boston are determined to make sure that all students have everything they need to be successful. While school is remote, the learning continues every day. The School on the Move Prize is an opportunity to stop and celebrate the amazing work at three Boston public schools. While we can't be together in person, our city is strong and resilient and our celebration goes on. Welcome to the 15th annual School on the Move Prize Ceremony. We've assembled a program worthy of the school communities chosen as this year's finalists, and we're glad that you're here with us. Now, please welcome, live from Boston, Investors President and CEO, Marinelle Rumanier. Thank you, Kenise, for helping us kick off this year's School on the Move prize ceremony. And hello to all of you joining us virtually. We're holding this year's ceremony live today from the heart of our city in Roxbury. We're so grateful to BPS Superintendent Brenda Caselius for hosting the program here at the Bruce C. Bowling Municipal Building. While we can't be together physically, we're so proud to be able to bring you an exciting and dynamic virtual program. Later on in our ceremony, we'll have the opportunity to ask our finalist school leaders some of your questions. So please drop those in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen, and we'll share a few of them with the school leaders later on. Today's a special day. We highlight and honor three schools that are making important progress in helping students succeed. And even better than that, they're making visible what is possible for other schools in our city and beyond. In just a few minutes, we'll reveal the winner of this year's School on the Move prize and celebrate with them as they accept the $100,000 that accompanies this honor. But first, we've put together a program that will help to you to get to know what drives these school successes and how they are selected. I wanna take a moment to acknowledge all the work and time that goes into making this event happen. I'm so grateful to the whole staff at Investors for bringing our event to life this year under these challenging circumstances. Our generous prize sponsors acknowledged at the top of the program and later in the event are critical to success of this prize. Thank you for investing in this work. We're also excited to be partnering with GBH this year to bring you this ceremony. They have a rich history of contributing to the educational excellence in our city and our Commonwealth. And now it's my privilege to introduce our MC for today's program, NBC 10 Boston anchor, LaToya Edwards. LaToya has also been a guest host of GBH's award-winning program, Basic Black. She's a Boston Public Schools graduate and deeply connected to our city. I'll let her tell you more about that. LaToya, take it away. Thank you so much, Marinelle, and hello to all of you. On behalf of all of us here at NBC10 Boston, I'm so thrilled to be with you today as we celebrate three schools in Boston making extraordinary progress for the young people of our city. And for those of you who don't know, I'm a Boston girl, born and raised in the city. I attended Boston Public Schools and graduated from Boston Latin Academy. I have experienced firsthand the difference a quality education can make in the life of a young person. My Boston roots and the education I received in our city has served me throughout my career and there is no doubt about that. 
I know it makes me a better journalist, but beyond that, it also keeps me connected to great people and organizations like Edvestors, making a difference in people's lives every day, every neighborhood of Boston. There's so much good work happening right now in our city schools, even with the challenges this year has brought us. Today, we shine a spotlight on three outstanding schools that have demonstrated and sustained improvement over the last four years. The 2020 School on the Move finalist schools are the Charles Sumner Elementary School in Rosendale, the Edward M. Kennedy Academy for Health Careers in Fenway, and the F. Lyman Winship Elementary School in Brighton. Now, later on in this program, one of these schools will be awarded the $100,000 School on the Move Prize live. But first, let's get to know these schools a bit more. We caught up with the school leaders and the educators to learn more about what is happening in their schools. And it's clear, even in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, these schools are on the move. So check it out. Today I'm gonna tell you what makes the summer special. I have a lot of things. Well, there's lots of things to love about the summer. Like there's amazing teachers, amazing people. You can make great, great, friends there. We have 550 students, but we know each of them and we strive to know their families. I think a huge lever for our improvement is staff collaboration. The relationships that we continue to focus on are a key part of the improvement. And that's relationships between teachers and students, student to student, teacher to teacher family to school. The community is very nice. For example, the teachers will help a student if they are stuck on a math problem and the students can learn in peace. I think our students enjoy that they have choice at our school. I think our students value that they are valued. And we have a class that specifically teaches social skills, conflict resolution, how to make friends, how to advocate for yourself. Our kids get to think about who they wanna be in the world. To become a Edvester School in the Move finalist gives us a sense of accomplishment because we've been recognizing many of our gains, but to have public recognition means so much. I love you. Bye. Hope you have a great day at the Sumner. We, the class of 2020, are the young people who will become leaders in a new world. We will be on the forefront of discoveries in the fields of science, technology, and medicine. We will join all the nations of the world in introducing innovative ways to combat issues like inequality, racism, and climate change. As a school leader, my job is to grow leaders. We are trying to prepare kids not only for college, but for the health profession. It's a big component of our school is partnerships and internships and job opportunities. Those resources like Mass General and Brigham and Children's and all of those partners like are huge for us. And I want them to be exposed so they have choices. I still want them to go to college. I'm proud to be part of this family because we give opportunity for people from all walks of life. There is no discrimination. It's always just diverse, and you know, a lot of students, you know, come from different backgrounds, and it's it's just nice. About five years ago, we've been asked to expand. We only had 200 kids, so I doubled in size. We needed to step back and have a strategic plan. We created department chairs, grade level coordinators. Deans of School Culture, we're checking in with kids all the time, and, uh, whether it's attendance or whether it's grades, nobody gets left behind. We're just grateful to be recognized. And I am proud of my students and my staff and my families, and we are not done. If I can get it right, I can't wait to share it with others. We 
love the Winship because the community is so diverse and international and it's so many families from everywhere in the world that are so welcoming and kind. About 48% of our students speak a language other than English at home. We have over 21 languages spoken in our school. As you come in, you are welcomed and greeted by multiple adults who know your name, who know your interests, who know your sisters and brothers. Um, so there's that sense of affirmation and connection from the moment you walk into our doors. Um, that continues into the classroom, and so you'll see our teachers do an incredible job of using students' interests and experiences and goals to guide what's happening in the classroom. The commitment of the Winship's diverse team of teachers, counselors, and staff is what makes the Winship School a special place. The teachers are so amazing. What do you like about? The library. Our school has grown in so many ways in recent years. A few areas that really stand out are a commitment to and skill in data-driven instruction, really using multiple and robust data points to better understand who our students are and what they need. I think the second area is a shared vision for student-centered learning environments so that we have a clear sense of exactly what we want instruction to look like, sound like, and feel like in each of our classrooms. And the team's commitment to really opening their doors, opening up their practice, showing the vulnerability to reflect has allowed us to go from islands into a community with a crystal clear vision for student-centered learning. There was just this daily commitment to taking steps forward to adjusting, to learning, refining, and growing. And I'm so happy that our incredible teachers and staff you know, get this moment to step back and celebrate the incredible work that they've done with and for our students and families. Even in this time, you know, we're yeah, trying to we're have doing as science now. Yeah, we're trying to have as much fun as possible. So Yeah. All right. Yay, Team Winship. You can see these school communities are well positioned with these educators at the helm. I know we're all looking forward to the day when classrooms are full again and we can hear the joy and feel the energy in those hallways. In the meantime, the work continues. Now, one of the people doing all they can to ensure every school in Boston is getting what it needs for its students to be successful is Boston Mayor Marty Walsh. The mayor celebrates the School in the Move finalists at the award ceremony each year and he recently found some time to speak with the school leaders about how they are keeping an eye on academic academic improvement despite the challenges before them. Take a look. It's great to see um, our school leaders with us today. Today is a proud day for the city of Boston. Uh, we're excited to award this year's School on the Move Award to a very worthy school. Uh, and, and it's uh, one of those events that I, I've been to every year and uh, a little different this year. Uh, obviously, it's virtual, but um, these schools are just amazing, uh, along with a whole bunch of other amazing schools in our district. So. Thank you all for joining us today. I want to just first like to hear from uh, Principal Brian Radley. Uh, what has been the most important uh, lever in your school's um, progress over the past few years? It's, it's awesome. Thank you, Mayor, so much for being here with us today and, and for this incredible opportunity to speak on behalf of the Winship community. Um, I want to just take a moment to, to really honor the incredible work uh, um, of Mona Ford Walker, who has been the longtime leader of the Winship School, and I, I'm very fortunate and I'd uh, like to be able to follow um, in, her, in, in, in her footsteps. Um, and I, I think uh, the key lever for improvement and growth at our school has really been teacher voice and leadership um, and the leadership team has worked hard over the over a series of the last few years to help to build in the structures and the support and the resources that our teachers need in order to make sure that our students get exactly what they need um, and so the team has come together to provide some uh, some focus and resources in three major areas and I, I think the first is uh, allowing the time and space for teachers to really delve so deeply into multiple and, ro and robust uh, like data sources that help us really understand who our students are and what they need. And Brian, I don't know if you've ever been to this event before, but in normal circumstances, the table that you brought from your school would be up clapping and screaming to let everyone know that you're there in person. So I know about there's a lot of clapping going on right now. Uh, to head of school, Karen Walker Gregory, uh, what does being selected as a school on the move finalist mean to you and your school community? First of all, I want to just give you a shout out for your leadership, Mayor Walsh, for all that you've been doing and working with the superintendent um, 
and leading our schools. This is odd times and we thank you again for your leadership. First of all, we are honored and humbled to be able to share our story. About 10 years ago, uh, we renamed our school from Health Careers Academy to the Edward M. Kennedy Academy for Health Careers. And the renaming aligned so well with the mission and vision of our school, as well as the mission and vision of Senator Kennedy. He really imagined a future of uh, educational ex excellence for all children and healthcare and economic opportunity for all families. The staff and students of EMK will continue to work each day to realize the future he imagined for all of us. So we are super honored to tell our story, hoping that other high schools can learn from us. Principal Megan Welch, uh, which, what is one of the ways we could re replicate what's happening at your school in other schools across the city of Boston? Thanks, Mayor. Um, yes, I think that our focus on providing basic needs to students is something that can be replicated. So at the Sumner, we believe that if students have the food, the clothing, the housing that they need, that this will then allow them to focus on learning. So we have a student support leadership team composed of myself and a few uh, other members of our, of our school team that work with families and work with students to meet their basic needs um, so that they're ready, ready for school and ready to learn. Um, secondly, I wanna just share that we have a teacher who uh, every day of the week is teaching social skills to our students. So 26 of our 30 classrooms have a trained social worker who is their teacher one hour a week, allowing them to build skills in leadership and how to make friends. Um, in our upper grades, students have an opportunity to, to talk about current events like immigration, racism, violence, and their neighborhoods and, and what they, they what they want uh, to be when they grow up and what their hopeful um, Boston will be when they grow up. Awesome, Mayor, in, in these incredibly challenging times, you've been working tirelessly on behalf of, um, of, our, of our students, our families and our, um, and our school communities. Um, and as you, think, as, you, as you think back to the Boston Public Schools as a whole, I'd love to hear, uh, what's your biggest source of uh, surprise when it comes to Boston Public Schools? There's a lot. Um the creativity, the diversity of our students, um, the growing diversity of our faculty, which is really important, uh, the dedication of our teachers, um, the resiliency over these past several months that have been difficult for everybody, including you, as I said in the beginning of this. But we all continue, you all continue to rise above uh, to the challenge to keep striving for success. Uh, I'm proud of that. Um, I often said this, when people talk about Boston Public Schools, they talk about, you know, we get caught up in this level one, two, three, four thing. And they're like, oh, these are the underperforming schools over here as if we should just throw them away. Um, and when I walk into those underperforming schools, uh, it, when we can walk into those schools, uh, I see a special teacher. I see a special leader. I see something, somebody doing something with, with a young person that that's just remarkable. So my pride is, I'm just very proud of our district. I'm competitive by nature, um, and, and and I honestly, you know, grades are important. I get that, but there's so much spirit and love, and great things happening in our district that I don't think get told enough. So my my sense of pride coming from every time I hear somebody that worked at a school or works at a school or went to school, uh, I'm so proud as as mayor, but I'm also proud as a citizen of Boston. Uh, Karen, Megan, and Brian, thank you very much for your leadership during these difficult times. I know that um, you know these are challenging, obviously challenging times since last year. But you, all of you, worked so hard to to get your schools ready to be open on October first. I know it's been stressful for each and every one of you, um, just dealing with everything in this world, including having your own families and worrying about your families. So, just from the bottom of my heart and from the people of Boston, I want to say thank you for your incredible work. 
Our thanks to the mayor and the school leaders for that interesting conversation. Now, of course, the work that Edvestors leads, including the School on the Move Prize, doesn't just happen. To do this important work, Edvestors needs support from all of us. Keith Motley, a member of the Prize Selection Panel for over a decade and tremendous leader in our community, and of course, my friend, will tell you more about Edvestors and the School on the Move Prize. Thank you, Latoya. It is so incredible to see you, even if it's virtually. I have watched you grow and I'm so proud of you. But most importantly, thank you for being a part of this special ceremony today. For many years now, I have dedicated personal time and lots of energy supporting the work that Ed Vesters leads because I believe in their mission and most importantly, I believe in their approach. Now, there are many organizations in our city doing amazing work for our young people and our children, but Ed Vesters tends to stand out. Their approach to working at the classroom, school, and the system levels ensure that all students get an excellent education. Now, while many of us are aware of Ed Vester's work through the School on the Move Prize, there's much more happening in that portfolio. Since 2002, Ed Vester's has raised and invested more than $35 million in Boston public schools. I said that since 2002, Ed Vester's has raised and invested more than $35 million in Boston public schools. That deserves a virtual round of applause. They have led the expansion of arts education in the Boston public schools for over a decade, but they also continue to scale, fund, and promote proven strategies for school improvement through their math and career pathway work, among others. They do all this while prioritizing equity in everything that they do. Now, you've heard me say this before, and I know some of you are really, really lucky, and you're quite fortunate that I'm not in the same room with you right now, but I got you virtually. You heard me say it before that Ed Vesters can't do this work alone. We need everyone to be engaged. They need our support, financial, 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 and otherwise. Now you can use your mobile link in the chat box to donate. And if you're able to support investors' important work in this critical moment, please do that. For those of you that watch this program later on, look for the link on investors' social media post because we're going to find you. It's going to be on social media. We're also going to put it on the investors' website, www.investors.org. In times such as these, we must remain well connected to one another. Let's come together now and support the work that is helping students who need it the most. I'm personally so glad to continue to be a part of this great work and hope that every single one of you out there are too. Thank you so much for joining us today. And now back to you, LaToya. We're just a few minutes away from the live announcement you've all been waiting for. But first, we thought it'd be fun to take a look at how these schools are selected as finalists and how a recipient of the prize is chosen. Leading us through this is Jim Stone, chair of the prize selection panel and longtime supporter of the School on the Move prize. Thanks, LaToya. It's been a pleasure working with you on our program this year. I've served on the School on the Move panel since its startup 
and I've had the privilege of being the chair of the selection panel for almost all of those years. This prize gives us an opportunity to see what works in our school system, and not just the occasional failures or disappointments that get inevitably more attention. It also gives us a chance to acknowledge the teachers and the principals who worked extra hard and succeeded for the kids we care so much about. When we choose winners, well, we give the whole educational community some good models and techniques to borrow. Every year, we find quite a few schools worthy of consideration. It's not easy to narrow the list to only three finalists and even harder to select a single winner, but we do. My wife Kathy and I are proud to have such a long association with this prize and to be its lead, lead funders. As you listen to the other speakers today and you learn about the selection process, I'm sure you'll appreciate why. Thanks. In Boston, nearly 75% of children attend a Boston public school. That's well over 50,000 young scholars attending 125 different schools across the city. When the prize selection panel begins its work, it is looking for schools taking actions that make them stand out from the pack. They're on the move. Here's how the process works. First, Advestors dives deep into the data to identify schools that have made significant leaps on standardized assessments over a four-year period. Only 10% of schools meet this bar, but tests aren't everything. Next, schools have a chance to describe their school communities and their transformation in their own words, outlining important changes like teacher collaboration, student support systems, and more. Then, applications are reviewed by the School on the Move selection panel an all-star team of Boston education, philanthropy, and business leaders. The panel looks for schools that not only demonstrate their own improvement, but also have relevant learnings to share with others. After narrowing down the many impressive entries to just three finalists over the summer, panelists visit each finalist's school. After a day of classroom observations and conversations with school leaders, teachers, and even students, the panel has a difficult decision ahead of them. Finally, a winner is announced. The School on the Move prize comes with a $100,000 award from Ed Vesters and the opportunity to document and share best practices. The winning school serves as a model and thought leader, inspiring other educators around the city, state, and nation. Well, now we know how the decision is made. Let's see which school will take home this year's prize. As promised, the decision will be announced live. And for that, we turn it back over to Marinelle. It's been a real honor for me to be a part of this year's ceremony, and I'm excited to see who will be named this year's winner. Thank you, LaToya. We're excited, too. And we are just moments away from revealing this year's School on the Move prize winner. First, I want to mention that there is so much more to the conversation between the mayor and the leaders of each of the finalist schools that you saw a few minutes ago. Later on today, look for that full conversation on Edvestor's social media channels, where you can watch it in its entirety. Now is the last call for questions for our school leaders. We want to hear from you, so please drop your questions in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. We have a few people here with us today, and I want to make a note about that. We have limited the number of people gathered in person and are taking all necessary COVID-19 precautions, including social distancing and mask wearing when we're not speaking. I'm delighted now to welcome Dr. Brenda Caselius, the proud superintendent of the Boston Public Schools. Thank you, superintendent, for being with us today and for hosting us here in the bowling building. Thank you, Marinelle. And I especially want to thank you and everyone involved with, with, with the work with Edvestors. That, and I want to thank you for your dedication to our kids and to our city and all your many partners and funders who support Edvestors and the great work that they do in our schools. We cannot do this work without you and we cannot do this work alone. And offering your energy and commitment means the world to our students. I am so proud to stand with these incredible school leaders today. Each of their school communities are showing us what is possible 
I was inspired watching today's program and seeing that even in these times when their communities are struggling so much, they're still so connected, so focused and joyful. Marinelle, what all these schools are deserving of this prize. I know there can only be one, but I'm excited to see which one will be selected this year and be our recipient. But first, I understand we have some questions from the audience. That's right, Superintendent. Our first question uh, comes from the audience at home in the chat box and is for Principal Welch. Um, Principal Welch, can you tell us uh, about a moment from the last year when you really could tell that your school was making a difference for a child or children in your building? There's so many moments. Um, I do think that a moment that our faculty had was after the, the George Floyd tragedy um, and our willingness to start talking about racism in America. Um, and so this past September, our faculty got together for two full days of uh, looking at our history as a country and looking at how race plays a role in uh, education and who we are as teachers of children. So I think that moment really stands out to me um, because adults were willing to talk about challenging and difficult pieces of their own lives. And that let me know that there's, there's nowhere we can't go as a school community. Um, so I think our faculty has really inspired me with their conversations. That's great. Thank you so much. It's really so important to hear those stories, Megan. And I know our next question comes from Claire Shaw of the Liberty Mutual Foundation. I think, Claire, we're going to pull you up on camera um, so you can ask your question. Is that right? Yes, Marinelle. Thank you. Hi, and hi, Superintendent Casillas. Uh, it's actually for Karen. And my question is, what role can partners play to best promote school improvement? Well, first of all, I would, I mean, Edvestors is the biggest partner I've seen. Um, but I, I really think uh, what makes our school successful, it really takes a village and it's, it's our partners. Um, we are so blessed to have uh, a lot of partners within the hospitals, Brigham and Women, Mass General. Uh, it really requires more than just me and the staff and the students. It requires business partners. And what I recommend is that every high school has a business partner liaison. So their full-time job would be to uh, provide internships for kids, um, provide job opportunities, um, and because it really does take a village helpful. I think that concrete suggestion is exactly the kind of uh, learnings we want to have from our School on the Move finalists. So thank you, Karen. I believe our next question is from the chat box uh, as well. And this one will be for the Winship School. Um, we have uh, the good fortune today to have with us the former leader of uh, the Winship, Mona Ford Walker. Uh, I know Principal Radley has asked uh, that you answer this question, which I think is such a wonderful example of a leadership transition where we have a new principal who's we're here with us today and the leader of the school for the last several years um, with us virtually. Um, so uh, we're pulling up Mona Ford Walker's uh, camera and Mona, we'd love to hear a bit from you uh, about family engagement. Can you tell us about the Winship School's family engagement strategies and, and how that's played into your school's improvement story? Yes, hello and greetings to all. I'd like to start by giving a big hello and virtual hug to all of the Winship scholars, staff and families who have logged on to today's ceremony and who are participating virtually. Um, we've worked really hard over the years to foster relationships with various um, community organizations um, in order to expand programming to our scholars, but also in order to strengthen our ability to meet the needs of our families and to partner with our families. More specifically, we formed a partnership with the Boston Saves program to teach our students early financial literacy. Um, we've also partnered with the uh, Handel and Hayden organization in order to allow our students to participate in music education and to invite our families into our school community to celebrate with us um, through music and arts. And finally, I'd say one of our biggest partnerships has been with City Connects. And through that partnership, we've really been able to dive deeply into 
meeting the needs of our families, identifying the needs of our families and connecting our families to certain organizations and supports in the community that could better meet their needs to help support the learning at home and also to better support the learning at school. Um, so really partnering with our families has been one of the, the levers in terms of the work of our school community over the years and it's really something that we value. Thank you so much, Ms. Ford Walker, for joining us and for that really helpful insight that included both partners and family engagement. I believe we have time for one more question and we're gonna switch it up a little bit by tossing the question to Jason Gallagher, who's the principal of last year's School in the Move prize winner, the Harvard Kent Elementary School. Jason, uh, I think we're pulling you up uh, on Zoom um, so that you can tell us about what winning the prize last year meant for your school. Oh. Thanks, Marinelle. Uh, it's good to be here. Um, I actually have butterflies in my stomach for Brian, Karen, and Megan, the principals, because I know the feeling. Um, what it meant to the Harvard Kent, really, it, it meant the world to us. Um, you know, our students, our families, our staff, we knew we were doing great work here at our school. Our data was telling us we were doing great work at our school. But still, getting the recognition from someone like Ed Vesters and all the supporters, it put us like on top of the world. Like it really felt like the work we're doing is important and people are recognizing that. Um, and it really boosted the spirits of everyone throughout our school building. Uh, it was really exciting to be a part of, of such a great event. And um, I guess the only way I can really compare it to is usually we get to watch someone on TV receive the award for something and to be those folks and be that school that gets that recognition um, it meant a lot and people were talking about us and um, most importantly, our students were proud, our families were proud um, and it, it just has meant the world to our entire community. So we're so grateful to be a part of it and, um, you know, congratulations to the, to the three schools who were part of this today and I can't wait to find out who the winner is. Thanks so much, Jason. Uh the celebration of these three schools and the Harvard Kent last year is so important as part of this work, but really uh, learning about what their practices are that help that improvement journey happen is a core part of this prize. And so if you wanna learn more about the Harvard Kent, we'd love for you to take a look at Edvester's new case study produced in partnership with the Rennie Center for Education Research and Policy, where the link is in, your ch in the chat box. Uh, appreciative of all those great questions uh, from our, our audience members uh, via video and in the chat box. And we are now getting uh, to the moment you've all been waiting for. And so the superintendent is holding in her hand the envelope with the name of this year's winner. So I'm gonna put my mask on and let you open that envelope. Oh, I've been holding it this whole time, just waiting. Are you guys ready? I suppose I should take my mask off. Are you ready in the audience? Yes. Okay, here we go. Everybody in our audience here, be ready to cheer loud, okay? Okay, and the winner is F. Lemon Winship Elementary School. Congratulations. On behalf of all of us at Investors, I'm going to offer my congratulations to uh, the, the Winship on this special honor. Um, and we're going to hold for a minute. We're going to hear from uh, Principal Radley in a moment. Um, but before we get to that, we're going to uh, go to a video for some celebrations from across our city. I am the proud past recipient of a School on the Move Award while leading at the Burke High School. I can only tell you how much joy that opportunity brought to both me and the Burke family. But today it's about you, and I'm here on behalf of the school superintendents to acknowledge your hard work, your dedication, and your commitment. We are so appreciative of your incredibly hard work and everything you do for the city's children. From the city of Boston, congratulations to this great school on winning the prize. The Plymouth Rock Assurance Foundation and the James M. and Kathleen D. Stone Foundation are proud to support the 2020 School on the Move Prize. Congratulations to the finalist schools for your inspiring work. 
Congratulations from the entire team at Houghton Mifflin Harcourt. Congratulations. Your commitment to providing a high quality education for Boston students is inspiring. Congratulations to the Winnie School on behalf of all the Edbuster staff. Congratulations. Congratulations on behalf of Edbusters and Fiduciary Trust Company. On behalf of State Street, I want to acknowledge and commend all of the finalists for this prestigious award and to offer a huge congratulations to the winner of the 2020 School on the Moon Prize. Thank you for all that you do to shape our future and congratulations. 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 Yes. Wonderful. Congratulations. Um, I am so moved and I am so honored. And as a humble representative of the entire Winship community, uh, I am so honored to accept the 2020 school on the move uh, surprise for the Winship school. Uh, I wanna share a heartfelt appreciation to Mayor Walsh and to Superintendent Caselius for their unwavering support of the Winship community and all Boston public schools during this, so during this unprecedented moment for our city. We're also so thankful to the entire Edvestors team, their incredible staff, their board, um, the, the selection panel, all their incredible sponsors um, that have made the, uh, this process so meaningful and, and instructive for I think each of our, each of our school communities. Um, and it's truly a privilege to be connected to a community of educational leaders and thinkers and schools and advocates who fight for equity and for justice and for opportunity for all of our kids. Um, I also wanna celebrate the incredible leaders of, of the Sumner and the EMK Academies who I've gotten to know throughout this process. Your outstanding schools, your positive example, your inspiration and ideas have been a, a support for me like during a very so challenging fall and, and I'm so honored to lead with you. Um, and of course, we wanna thank our district uh, and central office partners and our community partners that have, have helped us get to this moment with all your support. Um, before I speak, I, I do want to just take a moment to acknowledge and celebrate Mrs. Ford Walker, Mona Ford Walker, the former principal and leader of the Winship School for the past five years. Uh, so Mona has been uh, a, a driving force behind our growth and improvement. She leads with equity. She believes like, so deeply in the positive potential of schools when they work in close partnership with families and communities. Uh, and let, let, so excuse me to close any opportunity gaps for kids. And so we celebrate her impact like today as well. Um, and I'm biased, but uh, the Winship School is a special place. And so the story of our improvement is really the story of, of the people and the work. And this, and, uh, and, and, and this award, I think for me, serves as a powerful reminder that it's the daily work that makes the difference. And it's the people every day that make the difference. And so I'm talking to my team and my families and my students right now because uh, it's the consistent work, the kind of work that calls us to roll up our sleeves and do that small or nuanced uh, so thing that removes a barrier for an individual child or connects with the, heart, uh, uh, the hearts and minds of a group of students. So uh, I'm honored to, ac to accept this on behalf of all of you and I'm so thankful to everybody uh, for this incredible opportunity. Thank you so much, Principal Radley. Um, do we have the opportunity to hear from Ms. Fona, uh, Ms. Ford Walker as well? All right, well, we'll, we'll turn it over to you, Ms. Ford Walker. It's a unique opportunity for you to say a few words. Hello, I am just absolutely thrilled. This is amazing. Um, I, I am just, just thrilled. Thank you so very much uh, to Ed Vesters, uh, to Dr. Caselius, to Mayor Wash, uh, to everyone who um, is in leadership in, in the city of Boston, thank you so much for the supports provided to the Winship School over the past few years, as well as uh, to uh, many schools in BPS. Um, as a graduate of BPS, this means actually, you know, the absolute best honor to actually receive. Um, and I'm just absolutely thrilled. As you can see, I'm stumbling over my, wor my words right now because I'm just in sheer joy and excitement. Um, I do want to say congrats to Team Winship. I am so happy and deeply proud to have led you over the last five years. Um, we are such an amazing community. And I say we because I will always be a member of the Winship community. Um, and it's been absolutely an honor to lead the school community and also to lead alongside some really amazing educators and amazing uh, team of, of, of staff and supports have been in that building and 
we've all worked extremely hard, which has led us to this particular moment. I also wanna say thank you to our families and to our wonderful, wonderful scholars. You showed up every single day, ready to learn and absolutely excited about learning. And you made my job a lot easier. And so I wanna say thank you to you. The Winship is such a special community, such a special place. And to be honest with you, it's, I would say, definitely um, a school that's deserving of this school on the move prize and recognition status. Um, I do want to say thank you to my former colleagues, um, Dr. Karen Walker and also Dr. Karen Walker Gregory, excuse me. And also I'd like to um, give a hello as well to um, Megan Welch. Thank you so much for this journey and thank you so much for being amazing, awesome colleagues and for doing what you've done and what you continue to do for your school communities. And finally, I do wanna to say to all of the school leaders and all of the teachers and staff, this is an extremely challenging time to lead and to also serve our students. Um, and I just wanna tip my hats off to you and say, job well done. I know that this is extremely challenging. Um, I miss working with each and every one of you, but I know that you're doing great work on behalf of the, our students and on, on behalf of our families in Boston. So thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Ford Walker, and thank you, Principal Radley, for those incredible words. Um, we're, we're just delighted to congratulate you again on this honor. And to all three of our finalists, you three, among others, are shining examples of what's possible in the city. And I learned in this break um, that because of your inspiration today, uh, we have an anonymous donor who is uh, increasing the finalist awards to $20,000. So they have... Um, which has happened a couple of other times in our history, but no more deserved than in this moment because all three of you have put so much time and energy in showcasing the stories of your school and leading in this difficult time. And so I'm just delighted that somebody stepped forward with $20,000, not only to give to your schools, but to reach out to each of you in our audience as a match. And so we're hoping that if you are uh, so inclined and moved by this important work that you'll join us as donors to investors in supporting this prize, which will go towards that match of $20,000. We appreciate your support more than you, you'll know. Um, we're, we're at the end of our time here today. That's our program. And we're just so appreciative that you were able to be with us remotely. Um, thank you for taking the time to join us and to help us celebrate these schools and keep celebrating these schools. So please share their stories with others via social media, via people you know, because there are great things happening in our city and more people need to know about them. I very much hope that next year we can be together in person, but in the meantime, please stay safe and well. <laughs>